Here's the story of how a great book cover was created. We've all heard the phrase, you can't judge a book by its cover. But if you're an art director working for a publishing company, that's exactly what you want to do, to look at the cover, judge it, be intrigued by it, and buy it. The conventional wisdom in the publishing industry is that the average shopper scanning a row of potential books may look at each cover for only a few seconds. So it's important to make a fast impression and a good impression. So how does that happen? To illustrate the process, I'd like to tell you the story of the genesis of a single book cover for a dazzling novel called Vladimir by a new writer named Julia May Jonas. First novels can be particularly challenging to design because the author is usually unknown and consumers don't know what the story is. The publishing team at Avid Reader Press knew what they wanted the cover to achieve. Vladimir is set on the campus of an elite liberal arts college. But they didn't want the book to look like a campus novel because it's much hotter than that. It's about an older female literature professor who becomes obsessed with a younger male professor named Vladimir. If the title Vladimir makes you think of the author of Lolita, Vladimir Nabokov, you are correctly understanding the author's intention, which is to overturn the usual dynamic of young women being fetishized by older men. In Vladimir, it's the woman who fetishizes the man, and this woman is brilliant, fascinating, devious, compassionate, and so honest about her obsessions that I felt like I was listening to my best friend tell me her most intimate and shocking thoughts. The senior art director of Avid Reader Press, Allison Forner, was asked to create a cover that would challenge and reverse the typical stories about gender objectification, but to do it in a way that is funny and smart and provocative, just like the woman at the center of this story. So imagine you're Allison Forner and you've received all of these directions, some of them contradictory. The cover should have a classical look without referencing a specific classic novel, but it should also look contemporary. It should be sexy and provocative, but it can't be too sexy because then it won't look sophisticated. It should also be accessible because the book has the readability and suspense of a bestseller, but it can't look too accessible because then it won't be sophisticated. And because it's an original piece of writing, we don't want it to look like a typical thriller. But it's really suspenseful, so it shouldn't look too arcane or a feat, no matter how smart it is. So what did Allison do? Well, if I'd received such complicated requests, my first action would have been prayer, followed by meditation, followed by sleep. But Allison contacted one of the best designers in the publishing world, Rodrigo Carrasco who is known for work that is original but also commercially viable. She sent him the manuscript, shared their vision of the cover, and hoped for the best. After about a month, Rodrigo emailed Allison a set of comps, which is short for compositions. A few weeks later, Allison showed these 10 potential covers to the Avid Reader Press team. Here's what they initially thought as they reviewed the covers one by one. Number one signals that a young man is central to the story. There's a hint of a woman in the reflection. But the team agreed that it wasn't the right fit. It was too creepy. Number two, there was an overwhelmingly positive response to this one. People said, wow, what's that? There were some peals of laughter. Some people wondered whether the author and the sales force would be enthusiastic enough about it. Number three, a beautiful design, but too much like a thriller. Whenever you see blood on a cover, you think it's a thriller. Vladimir is suspenseful, but it's not a conventional thriller. Number four, Definitely a possibility, but the colors and typeface look modern and the team wanted a classical look. There's also a lot of type competing with the art. Number five, the team thought this was too specific, too much information. We're seeing too much of the man and not getting the idea of the female gaze. Number six wasn't seriously considered because it wasn't telling the story. It just wasn't as strong as the others. Number seven was definitely a contender. It conveys the idea of the female gaze of a woman objectifying a man, but it doesn't have a sense of humor and it doesn't have a classic look. Number eight is definitely telling a story, but the group wondered, is it telling the right story? Number nine was not seriously considered because it also looks too much like a thriller. And number 10 got serious consideration. The woman's face has some tension in it. She looks like she's up to something. But the consensus was that it looked like the cover of a more conventional book, and Avid Reader Press wanted to send a signal that Vladimir is a potential bestseller, which brought them back to their choice, number two, the clear, an immediate favorite. So Lauren sent it to the author, Julia May Jonas, who responded the morning after receiving it with this email message. I think I love it. 
I slept on it to see how I felt in the morning, and my obsession only grows. It's graphic and edgy and classic all at once, and I'm completely obsessed with the font. At first I was thinking, it's so risque, and then I was thinking about the many James Salter books we have with women's naked hips and torsos, and how it's all about the gaze. And that is the book. So now that the designer, the art director, the publisher, the editor, the agent, and the author agreed, there was only one final opinion that mattered, the Simon & Schuster sales force, which would have to convince booksellers to buy lots of copies of Vladimir. And when Avid Reader Press presented Vladimir at its launch meeting, there was a long debate about the cover. In the end, Avid Reader Press decided to stick with the cover they all loved. I judged this book by its cover and had an absolutely exhilarating reading experience. So the cover did its job. It made me want to read the book. And that is the word according to Carp.